Stilla, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are. Not live. Particularly if you like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me. You see it, little warning screen, just in case. Don't forget, we also got uh, Patreon.com. We post five to ten times a week. Yeah, uh, weekly. Including Premier League highlights, man. Let me know your favorite Premier League down in the comments. If you get a chance, just go check it out. You ain't got to do too much on there. Just go look. Uh, links down in the description. Twitch.com is where you can find a live stream, man. Username's at the bottom of the screen, man. This is Wesley Winter. My boy is back. <laughs> ah! Scotland divided. Glasgow has spoken. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Good afternoon. Welcome to Glasgow, often ranked as one of the most dangerous cities in Scotland, a country that hasn't really been spoken about when it comes to illegal migration and the recent protests in the UK. Not gonna cap, I'd move to Glasgow too. I gotta put Glasgow on the list too. Glasgow is like nice, like city, big city vibe too. Glasgow, Manchester, Birmingham, London, Yorkshire. There's a few more on my list that I'd definitely move to. Okay, but after going to London, Nottingham, the taxpayer doesn't pay for that, and Middlesbrough, bloody hell, mate. You never really know who's going to show up or what's going to happen. This even made me question whether the protesting really makes a difference. But today, we're going to let Scotland have a say. Of course, it doesn't. Let's go. And since the last protest, maybe in tiny towns it does, but like. Where the mayor actually does stuff, like, but like, mm, huge cities and I don't think so. Video about a month ago, over a thousand arrests were made due to violent disorder. Even this week, a man was sentenced to nine years in jail for setting a migrant hotel on fire. It just... Imagine taking off work, taking off work to go down here to protest, thinking you slick, no mask. Thinking you're not going to get in trouble and setting a hotel on fire and going to jail for nine years. Nine years. Nine. You're down bad, honestly. Shows that violence is the answer, and I hope this one stays peaceful. And just in front of me is... Realistically, you probably do three, but nine is incredible. George's Square, you can see the protesters are out today. It seems like so far it's just like a, a free Palestine or stand up to racism protests coming together. Let's check it out. Let's see if we can speak to some people. Absolutely filled. Wow. Really big. You know, when there's a protest, everybody comes out. No matter the subject of the protest, as long as it's peaceful, it's on the right side of things, Palestine gonna come out. Anybody that's protesting something is gonna come out. So you got like a stand up to race some sign. And fight against them. Some guys on the mic, that's who you can hear yapping. We have a shared duty a to educate, to promote equality. So what's your reason for coming today? Because racism has no place in the modern society. Yeah. Nothing at all. What's happened? It doesn't. It serves no purpose. It's, it's a wild, it's a wild concept. It's always been a wild concept. Racism has always been a wild concept. I am better than you. That is a wild concept to even think what kind of narcissism is like, like brother, we all start on the same equal path. No, not, no, let me not say that. I'm capping. We don't all start equally, but we all start in a place to make a difference. You know what I'm saying? And, and these things are taught and it's crazy. At the minute in Scotland? Generally, I think that we're beginning to realise exactly how deep the divides go and how we have to fix it. Like, this might be the first big march I've seen with this many people of all age groups. Yeah, well, it seems like a lot of different groups are here today. What is, like, the main message for today? Fuck a fascist. Nay, Nazis in Glasgow. 
Right, are there a lot of them in Glasgow? No, but we're just minding them, they're not allowed in. <laughs> okay, alright, yeah, thanks for the word. But this is what I'm talking about when you go to a protest and messages get lost. I've said this so many times. You've got a guy over here yelling on a microphone and then just opposite you've got a free Palestine march over here. You are still yeah, and you can't really hear what anyone is saying. People just come in with their signs, but I guess it's like volume and numbers. Which is, uh, which is fair enough, but yeah, big, big, big turnout. I see you've got the Stand Up To Race them sign. What's your reason for coming today? Um, I think it's a disgrace that people are questioning people's right to live in the UK when the entire UK is built on people coming here, building lives. We went there first. I think it, it's absolutely ridiculous to close borders now. Yeah, but I think a lot of the, the argument is about illegal migration. Is, is there a way you can actually integrate them into society? Absolutely, I see it all the time. We need to speed up the asylum process to allow people to have their claims heard. 70% of those claiming asylum are successful, which means they have a valid right to be here. And the quicker that we integrate them into society, they can contribute as they want, the better. Okay, yeah. But the funny thing is, if you're at a protest... This is valid. This is valid. Easier said than done, though. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you have to have a program to make integration seamless and smooth. Like everybody that comes, which which you can't even clock everybody that comes because a lot of people are taking the wrong route to get there. But everybody that you can get that comes the right way, they should have to take a, a three, four month course <laughs> on on integration. You know, on, on how like how to be successful where you are now or some not some some title that's not gonna get somebody canceled but you know what i'm saying some respectable but it gotta be a course or something yeah, she's, there's a lot of people you should have to go to school in the uk for like a year and a half no questions asked and it should teach you all of these you should have classes you should have english classes you should have yeah, it'll be expensive on the taxpayer dollar, but y'all giving free stuff anyway. So at that point, just, you know. A mask here today. I don't know if this, this will actually stay peaceful. I don't know why you come here if you want to hide your identity, as we've seen at many protests around around uh, around England. Let's have a look. Look at this guy, he's got a police horse here. Do you mind saying a few words yeah. on camera? Yeah. yeah. So what's your, what's your reason for coming today? I'm coming here today because for my grandchildren. Okay. That's the reason only. Right. To um, a safer country, safer Great Britain. Yeah. What's, what's happening to Great Britain? Well, look at them over there. That's, that's the cause. Oh, I'm done. Well, it seems like something's happening. I don't know. The, the street is... Everyone's coming to this side for some reason. Yeah. I knew that was going to be the temperature when I seen, you know what I'm saying? I was like, ah, I'm getting a bad read off of this. Then she said, look over there. Oh, there it is. You can see the police are here on their horses. Wow. It's a complete different scenario. And that's what I'm talking about. Every city you go, you really don't know what's going to happen. Wow. peaceful right now I'm not getting that vibe this side is getting kettled in at the minute wow it's really close it's not really separated buddy oh let's uh let's get a better angle on this yeah so you can you can see the police presence here on this side and look at the look at the wow look at it all wow What's your reason for coming today? Firstly, a protest against the government, and not just only immigration. There's so many things just now. Society is broken. 
Like, like, what's happened in Scotland specifically? NHS waiting times are ridiculous. There's lack of council housing. Okay. Uh, Education suffering. It's the whole system strained. Eh? Yeah. D d NHS wait times been terrible though, right? For a long time. Wow. They say he's shouting on the horse. So that man said that he's here to protest more against the government. It's not so much uh, against illegal immigrants, what we've heard before. But yeah, they're really getting cowed in here. I guess they want to keep them in this in this square. Hey lads, I, I, I see your sign. It says asylum frauds out. What, what's, what's kind of the message today? I can agree with that sign. I can agree with this sign. Asylum frauds, the key word frauds. There are frauds that are coming here that have asylum somewhere else and are throwing away the passports from what the, the, the research that I've done, that this is a real thing. Let me hear what he say though. It's a message. Yeah. Too many want rid of them. That's a message. Too, 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 too many. Can't they keep ourselves now, mind them. Yeah, too many what? Well, you daft me, you hear for Five hundred million cuts in Scotland this year. Five hundred million. Well, school classes are over. Well, education systems on its ass. The crime rates went up. The state of the UK, it's getting worse and worse by the month. Um, and you've got these nutcases here. Uh, well, all they want to do is chant Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. Yeah, we're the ones on the side of the Jews. They want to erase the Jews for the planet. And they're coming here, they're bringing their politics about Palestine here. If you want to go and help and fight, Pat, go back to Palestine, go and fight for Palestine. But they want to exterminate the Jews, yet all the, the whole argument is really not. That's a pretty broad statement to make up. I don't think that's the case. Not with all of, not with everybody. Of course, there's a small percentage, just like on your side, there's a small percentage that want to do all of these hateful things. But like for you to umbrella all of the free Palestine movement under a extermination of what he just said, like that's, that's, that's a pretty ignorant statement and it's uneducated in my opinion. And and just for that, your shirt is too tight. It's too small. Go get a bigger size, buddy. Nazi says, Casey, these people are mentally ill. Is this against the government or is it against illegal immigrants? Who, who wants against to... uh, illegal immigrants. The government are divide and conquer. Yeah. That's a fact. The government is divide and conquer. They watch it, y'all. Strain yourselves out. Whose responsibility is it? Because they're, the they're coming in in the thousands. Man, the, the government. government. Starma! Two tier policing. Starma! Glasgow City Council housing illegal immigrants before their own. But what's the solution? Some are Buddy back here is smart. He's staying quiet. I think he has a nine to five that is respectable and he'd rather just be quiet. <gasps> Excuse me. Rather be quiet. Ready here. They're here in their thousands. What can you do? Deport them, mate. Simple as that. Stop we are coming. Listen, we can't are. keep ourselves. We've got our own f***ing people that's homeless. And they're coming out and getting put up in the hotels and fuck those with. You fucking kidding me. I'm for peace. I'm pro immigration. I'm not against immigration, but it needs to be controlled. I'm fed up spending all my money, my tax money, going to all these illegals flooding in. And it's new. What were you going to say before? Does that sound like you caught yourself? And all my money, my tax money, going to all these illegals flooding in, and it's not even that. A lot of them are getting killed on the way, and they're for some reason, it, it already started bad with you, sir. For me, for me personally, it, it, we're all the, you can't backtrack and play clean up now. Oh, I'm pro. No, no, no. I heard what you said. <laughs> Getting exploited and everything, they're coming here and exploiting us, and they're not being peaceful. Don't get me wrong, there's some of them that will be peaceful and be, but it's 95% fighting age men. It makes no sense. We don't want that. As you know, Glaswegians are a really friendly bunch, but you can't be breaking into a country and then expect to be. Anyway, me, I don't even want to get into it too much. Yeah. It's too easy to just start spouting. 
Well, no like that. We're not here for that. Yeah. yeah. But at the minute, I feel like everyone's really divided. I feel like if, if change is going to happen, you have to go to the governments. There's not, there's not really much point shouting and screaming in our streets. Yeah. That's another topic. The government of this country is a whole different policy. I don't want to yeah, yeah. get too personal about it. Yeah, again, it's just a not a good situation. Yeah, a lot of people I've spoken to today, they don't want to say too much, maybe out of fear of saying something wrong. Different to a couple of months ago, where people are saying anything they want. And they had reason to be fearful. As yeah, you're getting arrested now. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. Talk to him, Wes. People have been jailed for sharing posts online, while figures like Hugh Edwards are given suspended prison sentences. This policy, this two-tier policy, is really showing. There's not that many people here because most people are scared to come out because they think they're going to get banged up. But yet, the people over there, they know they can get away with murder. Literally. You know, they can do anything. I mean, they've even got their government officials threatening to slash our throats. And did he go straight to prison? No. Someone's been taken away? I don't know what that's about. I didn't hear that. Is that true? Police speaking to him. But yeah, as you can see, Scotland's really divided today. Like, people have told me St George's Square isn't really like this. You don't get, you don't usually get this many people here. Hey, buddy. Met you in London. Hey, nice to meet you, mate. Do you mind saying a few words? Hi. It's been pretty peaceful so far. Yeah. As much as, like, I feel like the police presence at time, of course they're here to keep us safe, but it does kind of make it like a pressure cooker when... It's quite aggressive. Yeah, it, it yeah. kind of changes the tone a bit, but... What, what's interesting to note is that the, all the police seem to be facing this side, right. and the, there's no police watching that side, which is very, very interesting. Uh, I'm not going to say my thoughts on that, but I've yeah, got yeah. a, You know, sure. it's very obvious who the police are watching. But this side is very, very peaceful. Yeah. I've just came to see with my own eyes, which is what I always do. Yeah. That's why. I have a question. Would you, would you, would you, would it be fair to say that the Palestine protest, I'm not taking those sides. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just being intris, intrinsicative. What, what's the word? How you say it? You know what I'm saying? Um, would you say there's been free Palestine protests before, right? We would say that. How long has free Palestine, pro, Palestine protests been going on? Years. Years and 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 years. And years. They've been there as long as I can think back. Chicago, at least, has been going with free Palestine protests for at least 10 years back that I can think of personally. Maybe seven or eight. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm just probably like I'm just hypothetical. Like in the police mind, they thinking like, man, they all what they've been here. They've been having their protests. They've been peaceful. They've been yelling at the government. They've been trying to be seen. But I guess I would guess my guess is this this side of the protesting is newer, and it seems in the police eyes to be pointing or aimed. At being a ant, like not an anti, but like a, a opposing, like a threat to the other. I don't know. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm just, I'm just ask. I'm asking the question: Could that be a possibility that the Palestine, the free Palestine, pa free Palestine protests have been there and they've been peaceful for the most part, and the police know that, and then they come and they see especially with the track record of recent like the last three four months five months they come and look and they then they like nah we got to keep this side calm and 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 from what i've seen on wesley's camera today like the last time we seen on, on the fence they was pointed both ways i was down in london but yeah. I've just came to see with my own eyes, which is what I always do. Yeah. That's why I was down in London where I met you. Right. And today, speaking to the other side, the message has been refugees welcome. And I've kind of said that is dangerous at the minute when they're crossing the channel. What do you think is the solution? Because despite what people think, these people are risking their lives just going on the waters. The solution is to stop them at source. France should be stopping them getting on boats in the first place. Yeah. Right. And once, if they've managed to... You think France cares? France is looking like, all right. Less for us to do. To get on a ball, we should be forcing them back into France. The, the, the whole 
fakery of this uh, asylum seeker, it's economic migrants. Of course they're economic migrants because they're passing through all these safe countries in order to get to us in the first place. I have to put the Navy in the channel. Got to stop it. Yeah. See if there's no other reason for stopping it. Stop it to stop vulnerable people and children drowning yeah. on unsafe boats. Boats paid for by gangsters, traffickers, yeah. putting people into these boats and sending them into the channel. The channel's a treacherous shipping lane. People are dying regularly. Yeah. That in itself, for humanitarian reasons, that needs stopped. We can't take any more people into this country. Yeah. They've came on small dinghies, they've thrown their papers and their passports overboard. We don't know where they've come from. They're getting free accommodation. Yeah, see, that stuff I don't agree with. Like throwing your paperwork and being a fake asylum seeker when people are really, really in need of asylum and, and, and free food, benefit, and we, the normal people of this country, are being left behind. We need to focus on our homeless first. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen, but the homeless population in Scotland is one of the biggest out of the world. There's people every single street you walk down, you will see three or four homeless people. It's better to put them in hotels than the migrants. But is there a way also to potentially integrate those people into I feel the same way about Chicago, like, Chicago is an asylum seeking, or uh, asylum, they, they, they provide asylum too. Uh, I don't think they putting people up in hotels, I could be wrong, but they definitely putting people in tents and things of that nature. But, um, it's easy to say, oh, you should be putting your our own in, in in hotels. But I used to work at a hotel. I used to work at a hotel. And I used to see people out of the kindness of their heart try to get people hotels that are homeless. And and, and I would say 90% of the people who got the people ho hotels, we stopped letting it happen because the rooms would get trashed. They would bring a bunch of other homeless people in. They would start doing, they would start doing, you know, class A's. They would be doing, and I'm in the middle of downtown. Keep in mind, I worked at a hotel hotel, like a high rise, like in in River North. Look up River North Chicago. Like, I, I, that's why I worked down there. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to say, oh, we should be giving our own homeless. But our own homeless have this mindset <laughs> where... Take advantage, take advantage, take advantage, take advantage, take advantage, take the piss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so this is easier said than done thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like maybe with the asylum seekers getting the hotels, like the hotel management probably thinks they'll be calmer. Like, they'll take this opportunity and won't mess it up. Like, I, like I, I, I'm just being honest with you. Like, the homeless people in Chicago... They'll tear a hotel down. They'll tear it up. They'll treat it like it's the the, the sidewalk or something. Trash everywhere. They're like, yeah. Remember, I used to work at a hotel. I've seen a homeless person get a room, and I've looked at the homeless room, the, the room the next day. Just down bad. Society, although people say it's majority men, there are obviously like men, women and children who do make the crossing. Is there a way to actually integrate people in society if they're genuine absolutely 100 yeah. percent. those people will be embraced here no one should have to live in an oppressed country and if the only safety they can find is in the uk then so be it there's certainly enough wealth in the uk to accommodate genuine decent yeah. people that want to integrate yeah. and want to respect the culture yeah. of this country yeah. and mutually we will respect yeah see i like his outlook on it see this is the proper outlook to have like this is this is it other people be what wigging on here like theirs of course we will we're decent people that's it proper outlook in my mind but there's a narrative at play that's twisting everything and uh, this you know these far right terminologies are getting thrown around like sweets it's a uh, that's the problem. The narrative's the problem. The media's the problem. Because somebody's paying for those headlines and they're not true. You can't paint everybody with the same brush. You can't just call everybody right wing. It's, it's wrong and it needs to stop. Yeah. What have you seen specifically wow. in Scotland with illegal immigration? Because it is a country that hasn't really been in the in the in the But you gotta you gotta think about it. The new age media is as a dying not the new age, the regular media outlets are a dying breed. 
You know what I'm saying? The people who watch the news are getting older <laughs> and things are happening. So when opportunities come like this where they can just push headlines, push headlines and get views and, 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 and put titles to stuff that are really clickbait and they're going to go with it. They're going to get their views up no matter what. In the narrative so far? Uh, well, I don't know about being in the narrative so far, but they're probably in the narrative now if you look around. Definitely, definitely. So what would you say is the main message after today? Because when you have a counter-protest, there's noise from both sides and shouting and screaming. What would you say is the main message? The main message would be keep up these protests until our governments do something about it. They've got to listen to the people of this country. We are the ones that are paying the tax. So why are we not being listened to? And when you do, when governments do that to people, there's going to be a backlash. Why is this a surprise that the government is not listening? This is not a surprise to anybody, especially anybody from like, that look like a, a, a minority has been knowing the government's not, not, not listening. I'm talking about from the American standpoint, like in America, minorities know they, the government don't be listening. Now, when the when the non minorities get to figuring it out, that's when it's a real problem. It's shocking, <laughs> and that's what I, I kind of feel like. That's was like the locals, the born and breds are figuring out the government don't give a god. They don't care. They just want the power. They want to be in office to get their own personal gain. Their own stature to get wherever they're going they're not really listening to the people they're not for the people and if you voted somebody in that felt like they was for the people that whoever you voted in quickly realized that they did not have no real power when they got there and they couldn't do the stuff that they promised but you know 2024 now and it's already starting. Yeah, you mentioned the taxes. I feel like there's a lot of money being spent on foreign aid. Is there a way to kind of please everyone in, in this scenario? No. Stop giving out foreign aid. A lot of people in this country don't want foreign aid. No is the answer. We're giving it to countries that have got a space program. Why? Why are we doing that? We're giving it to South Africa so they can get to net zero. Never going to happen. Never in a million years. But yeah, they're quite happy to do that. But their own people in this country are being taxed up the wazoo because of it. And we can't... A lot of people need to go watch that movie, Wakanda. <laughs> like, go watch Black Panther. You see how Wakanda did? Wakanda did not give a damn about what was going outside on outside of Wakanda. They did not care. The government only cared about their people. Oh, they fighting a war? Shoot, we good. Our borders are good. <laughs> I, and and I, get, I get where the locals are coming from. Like, let's take care of the people here first. I get that. Before you get to sending billions of dollars somewhere else. Like, fix fix some of this, these boarded up buildings and, and, and X, Y, and Z and you don't have to look good in this country's eye and that country's eye and be around here kissing ASS all the time. Like, fix, fix, fix it here. Then reach out. You know what I'm saying? They probably looking at y'all like, man, they finna give us a bag. And they ain't even got their own self together. They borrowing money to give to us. Tough. In that, because you're going to get people saying, well, what's the point of getting it to work? taxed up the wazoo because of it and we can't sustain that because you're going to get people saying well what's the point of getting it to work when when i look at my, my wage slip and it's tax 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 how am i going to pay my rent how am i going to pay my mortgage how am i going to feed my kids that's why people are out here it's so unfair i think the, the trap looking good we should be focusing our money on Scotland. Yeah. See the thing is, over in the UK, Keir Starmer's just promised three billion pounds. Three billion pounds a year to Ukraine. Don't get me wrong, what's happening in Ukraine isn't right. But you need to give that money to Scottish people and English people, Northern Irish people and Welsh people. Yeah. It needs to go to us first. Right. 
after today, a lot of people will be calling this a far out rally, Nazis, as you've heard. Uh, why do you think most people are here today? Most people are here to make our country safe. Yeah. That's what it is, to make our country safe and not have people come in. Yeah. If we are, to, if we want our country to be safe, and we're labelled far right, Nazis, fucking racist, then that's what we are. Because we know that we need to make our country safe. If I am a racist for wanting my country to be safe and wanting people checked to come into my country, then I'm a racist. I mean, look at it now, it's kind of... You ain't wrong, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> hey, I want the right provisions to be made for people coming in too, to hear. Like, that don't, I, I can't be racist. And I hate, I know people hate to hear that, oh, do you, cause you black, you can't be racist, you damn right. No, I cannot be. Now I can have certain prejudices where I think this way and this way, but racism is systematic. There has to be a bigger system behind you and there's no system behind me. You know what I'm saying? There's no system. So, but I can agree with that, man. I want people checked. 100%. I don't want nobody just walking in like, oh yeah, you don't know who you letting in. We ain't did no background check. We don't know this person from left, from Greg to to Stan. We don't know what this person's name is. You in here naming people John Doe's and they still alive. Like, I need to know who this is. You need to know who this is. You know what I'm saying? It's a bit of a clown. Let in law-abiding citizens. If you ain't a law-abiding citizen from wherever you coming from, go back. And, and I, I can agree with that. We got enough degenerates everywhere. <laughs> like, uh -uh. is this horse shit? Is this horse boo boo? Okay. I'm sure this, it's like a concert. Uh, it's like, a joke. But who who are the people here today? Like, I don't be really, like, yeah. Who, who are they? Would you say? So some of the people are mostly Celtic fans. Okay. Celtic fans have a big sort of Palestinian link, but what they don't understand is people from Palestine have no idea what a Celtic football club is. They don't. No! Whoa, something's happening. Some guys come on to the other side. Wow. They're all chasing him, they're all chasing him. Wow. Police have got him. Wow, the police have got someone on the ground. Okay, they're chasing someone. Wait, what happened? I don't know what's been happening. Someone just. Apparently, somebody came from the other side. And did something. Okay, move off. Whoa, something's happening. Some guys come on to the other side. Wow. They're all chasing him, they're all chasing him. Wow. Police have Wow, the police have got someone on the ground. Yeah, someone someone came over and uh antagonize this side. They just came over antagonizing. Okay, they're getting the batons out. They're not afraid to use them. Wow. There's loads of people here. Wow, masked up. But yeah, someone definitely came over to like start something. And that's why they chased this, that man. That's what I saw. Yeah, the police, uh, the police keeping their distance, controlling the crowd. People are calling two-tier policing. After a close call, I managed to find someone else who came over to the other side. This time, they weren't looking for trouble. I strongly feel that we are all human yeah. and the borders simply need to open because of climate change, wars, famine. Right. And seriously, if we were on the other side... I don't think people have... A, the majority of people... Yes, there are some bad apples on the other side. But I don't think the majority of the people over there disagree with these statements. You know what I'm saying? If you are an, an asylum seeker and you are really in need and you're not faking it and you haven't disposed of your passports and, and, and you're going through the proper channels and paperwork to be there, then I feel like everybody is in agreement in, of that. All right, cool, come. But it's the people that are taking advantage and just... Just like the people on Benefit Street. <laughs> the people are who, who are taking a, a, a advantage of the benefits, the benefit system. 
it's like the same thing. They're coming here to take advantage of the British government for giving them all the things that they need and more. And people are not liking that. Side, I mean the people who are oh, sent to seek refuge. Right. Refuge, we would be doing the same. Yeah, right. Yes. Isn't Japan a great possession that we want to stop the Gaza war? Yeah. Israel must open its borders for Palestinian refugees. Banner Parade supports stopping the Gaza war. But it's, but it's actually refreshing to see that you guys, you've actually come over here and tried to make some kind of dialogue with people. I feel like there is a lot of shouting and screaming and people need to understand where people yeah, are coming from. We should communicate. We should yeah. communicate so that we know what people stand for. And, yeah. you know, we want to start a conversation. Yeah. That's all we want to do, start a conversation. The left absolutely hate the Scottish people. Right, and uh, same that's racist against the Scots, yeah. not the other way about. Right. But when you say refugees welcome, at the minute, that's quite a dangerous thing to say when they're crossing the channel and they could potentially die. But, well, who would be crossing a channel if they weren't in this bad situation? Public. What's the problem, mate? Refugees are not welcome here. Not welcome. Right. Yeah. Send them back, the port not support. But you're, what's going to happen is that these people are coming out of our country and they will be used as a whip to further undermine the working conditions of the people in Scotland. Right. So we've got to convince the left that mass immigration is not good for the Scots, that us being a hated racial minority in 2066, what will diversity be like for us then? Right. Because we're at the end of the queue for everything just now. But what, what about those who actually contribute to society and actually you know, pay taxes, work and are integrated? It's a, it's a different story compared to the illegal immigrants, say. So. Well, I would argue that they're not integrating. I would argue that they're staying in their own ethnic bubble within their country. But yeah, should we, should, should, so that's not integrating. But sure, shouldn't we find a way to do that, though? It can be done, mate. You only need to look at Sweden, Denmark. What we have to do is start sending people back and sort their countries out so that they want to stay there. But even to send them back, that's going to come out of cost. It'll be taxpayers' money sending them back. Same as the reason why we're housing them. That's, that's coming out of our pocket. They all need to go back, sir. First generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation. They still have to go back. That was deep. First, second, third, fourth, fourth generation, they are born here. Even third, maybe even second, are born there, if that's the case. Yeah, he's he's coming off wild. There's a big thing. Do you think pedophiles are all right? Some of you think pedophiles are all right? Yeah, back to our conversation. Like, yeah, at the minute, it is quite dangerous to welcome refugees when they are going on dinghies across the channel. What What is the solution? Uh... The solution is to process fairly who is fleeing persecution, war, famine. Yeah. Be fair about it, not put them into one group like this gentleman said, well, gentleman man, that they're all rapists. Yeah. There's probably rapists here. There's, you know, it's where in every group of people, there's different yeah. kind of kind people, rapists, you name it. Yeah, but that, that's an argument to be had once they're in the UK and in England. I'm talking about when they're actually leaving France. It's, it's dangerous for them right now to be crossing, especially we're coming into the winter. The sea isn't going to be calm. But isn't that proof of how desperate these people are? Yeah, of course. So they know the risk. They know they yeah. might. Yeah, people are. Some people are desperate, but I, I agree. But some people also understand it has been communicated back, like, hey, you can come here and they got free money for you. They got free money, they got free living, they got a brand new start for you. That's also being communicated. So if you're in France and you got buddies that came here, yeah, man, they, they it's hundred times better. They gonna give you everything you need to start and you can be able to send money back to your fam. Some people are just taking that risk. You know what I'm saying? Just for that alone. What are they escaping from France? France is somewhere nice, ain't it? Die. I'm just, but you know, I'm a part of the new age media right now. So when y'all look at me and y'all see me watching these type of stuff, I'm just asking questions. Don't think I'm on no side. I'm, I'm just asking the question. Answer it for me. Yeah. But still, they go for it because of the situation they're in. Exactly. But when you see, say refugees welcome, what, what should be done now? Because they can't keep doing that. People are dying. As I said, be fair. You know. Oh, basically. 
have people come, assess their situation, and treat them fairly. That's all. Because basically this whole crowd is to stop other people speaking. It's the entire purpose of this crowd is yeah. to stop those people speaking. All right? uh, it's good that you're coming over and having that that yeah, I, I think she has, she has got a fair point though. There should be some there should be some open dialogue and understand each other's views. I said that earlier. What he just said, the point of this crowd is to stop that crowd from speaking. And he's saying the point of the crowd opposite of the Palestinian crowd is to stop the Palestinian crowd from speaking. And sometimes, literally, when I watch these, that is what it feels like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And maybe to the police, that is what it feels like as well. Can they agreed or disagreed? I don't know. It's a very debatable topic. I feel like there are some fair few. He was cooking for a second, but he got cut off. The lady did something else. Five G plus Kim trials equals. It's on both both sides, but there are also extremes on both sides as well. Calling you guys Nazis and racists. Uh, I mean, I, I support I support guys as myself. Free Palestine. Yeah. You see, like, she's been escorted back, you see. But she's alright, I mean, she's yeah, come over yeah. for a nice dialogue, that's fine. It's fine. Thank you for So, yeah, the police are trying to, you know, make sure no one comes to this side, and they should. I saw earlier some people were chasing someone out, so, yeah, I feel like the police have done a pretty good job, especially with the numbers you've seen today. You see the police horses, you see how vocal people are being. Um, I feel like the beginning of today was quite hostile, but I feel like the police themselves have realised it's not it's not that kind of day out. It has been relatively peaceful. And despite what you hear in the media saying that it's all football fans and thugs that will come out, I think you have to see it for yourself and take it on a city by city basis. You saw what happened in Middlesbrough, but I'd say Glasgow has been vocal but very peaceful. And yeah, look at the turnout here today. What's your reason for coming today? Uh, I just want to stand up for what's right, show um, that the racists, that they're not welcome in our city, that once the people can really come together, we can be a force for... Nah, yeah, yeah. There are some firm racism. Racists, <laughs> though, like... You know what I'm saying? The negative is always going to outshine the positive, 100%, especially in the media. And <clears throat> these big media conglomerates are going to grab onto every bit of negativity and make it a highlight. And that's what one side is going to see more of from each side portrayed in the media. So you got to be able to read between the lines, though. A good change. Yeah. What do you think is racist about the other side at the minute? If you look over there, that's racist. There are Union Jack flags, there are racist chants, there's Union Jack everything. Is that and racist, though, holding up the Union Jack? I mean, that's been a big debate, like, this well, past few months. The reason for this rally was the reason that the anti-racist rally has been... I see a Confederate flag, I automatically think you racist. <laughs> I mean, so I'm guessing that's the equivalent for that flag. I'm not sure. I'm not educated on it, but that's that's how I be feeling. And it could not even be that, but I still feel that way. <clears throat> Called is because that is a far right rally convened under the banner of say no to refugees it's racist right. there's nothing wrong with a union jack but they're using the union jack to yeah right. in in my in my in my experiences that confederate flag has been used in the way that she is saying that the union jack has been using so it's like that, that's the vibe i get from it until somebody comes up to me and be like no no we just blah 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 to support their right wing cause right that's the, it's the way the union jack is being used the fact that they're actively against the genocide that's happening in palestine that they are actively assaulting their own community storming hostels and hotels that are holding immigrants that are terrified and just want to be safe yeah and i would safely would, raise their children would you say that's mostly in england what have you seen specifically in scotland has there been any violence like personally i haven't seen it just like from my experience but like a lot of the media um, and then this today people are being very very aggressive but it's good they're being driven back 
some of the signs that I've seen from the other side have been abhorrent, basically saying to put people back on the ships, which is absolutely disgusting. Like It's ridiculous the idea that we shouldn't be having people in here. Um, Scotland's population has been in decline as well, kind of generally. And I would kind of like there to be somebody around to pay for my pension, if nothing else. Like, if even for purely yeah, yeah. selfish reasons, the anti-immigration stance makes no sense. I think that we know already in this country that refugees contribute. He's reading between the lines. Hey, come on in. I need my pension paid for, buddy. Vastly to the economy. But that's on the basis that they're coming in and getting integrated and blah, 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 you know. I mean, that is yeah. fact. And we need to get those facts out there. But I think the other side is a lot of people are arguing that they're not coming in correctly and not getting vetted and not, you know, law-abiding citizens. I don't think that's the biggest problem. I think it needs to be a sit-down, which is impossible. Let me... ...there to try and counter the racist and intolerant fascist messages that are being put out. Yeah. I think that in this way that uh, refugees are treated just now is not in the country's best interests or in their best interests. I think that asylum seekers come here and are left to live on £8 a week, and that's for food, for everything. And I think that the, many of these people have skills that could easily be used. People who put their entire families on a dinghy to try and cross the channel or doing this out of desperation. No one yeah. does this unless they have literally no other option. Yeah. But shouldn't that be more of a priority at the minute? Like That's a naive thought process. There are people are, that are doing it <laughs> for their own personal gain. Coming here. Well but there also are people that are doing it that have no other option. Will the government even hear the message that people are saying? Well, do, do protests work? Stand Up to Racism organised today's demonstration um, is very proud that it's worked nice. alongside the Charity Care for Cali, the PCS, um, you know, ho ho work, ho trade union of the Home Office workers, long before uh, the racist riots came onto the streets yeah. to demand uh, safe passage now. For example, the current government is following in the footsteps of previous governments when yeah. it talks about um, stop the boats, the you know the smuggling gangs, and so yeah. on. Yeah. Actually, this is a sim this, th there's a very simple solution to this, which could be implemented tomorrow, which is just open up legal and safe routes. Even if it wasn't like you know yeah. rooted in all of this racism and fascism and hatred, I'd be just going like you know purely economically, guys. You should be like wanting as many people in here as you can. Yeah, these yeah. guys are looking after our NHS. That are you know thank fuck we kind of live in somewhere that's kind of stable and we can live in safety and. Anybody, everybody should have that right. Yeah, so. I think there are mixed messages today, but for those who are against specifically illegal immigration, when people come undocumented and they say they're a strain on our economy, what would you say to that? Um, let I've never heard anybody have that outlook, and it is eye-opening. It's true, I need my pension, I need the NHS to be running smoothly, I need everything. <laughs> Them actually work and pay taxes, and then they'll stop yeah. being a strain on the economy. Is, is there a way to actually integrate them into society, especially when they're undocumented? I mean, yeah, just document them. Um, like the the whole idea of an illegal immigrant is ridiculous to begin with, because we live on an island. So you talk about like illegal entries and small boats. We've closed down all of the legal options, yeah. so they have to. And but we still have a legal obligation to take in asylum seekers. But if the only way that they can get here is by boat, then obviously they have to use an illegal, like we've created this fucking... We don't want to hear any more rhetoric about stop the boats. We want to hear safe passage now, refugees are welcome. Yeah. With, with that though, should it also be done on, let's say, a country by country basis, so we ensure that there are people fleeing war? Well, I, I mean, to be honest with you, I think whether people are fleeing war, whether they're fleeing the horrors of climate change um, and climate chaos, whether they're fleeing, um, you know, Every human being has a right to live in circumstances. Yeah, I mean, I mean, actually, um, fleeing that a dangerous. Well, yeah. we only get one life. Our lives are short. Everybody has a right to seek better life. Um, and you know, I mean, my family are, are you know, go back uh, migrants from Ireland. We all, we all immigrants. We're all children yeah, we're all of immigrants. migrants. Yeah. So, I, to be honest with you, I think that no, we shouldn't um, be trying to. Um, you know, fine tooth comb who we let into the country. Like migrants and refugees are part of what's built the NHS, what's built all the buildings around this yeah. square and everything else in our society. So I just think we should, you know, people should be welcome. Should it be done on, say, a country by country basis? Because we've seen it in, in Ukraine, you've seen it with Afghan migrants come in. Is there a way to do it on a country by country basis? No, I mean, I would just say open the doors, honestly. Anyone um, and everyone? Yeah. Yeah, trust me, you're going to, like, <laughs> you're going to have far more better people coming in than you will the bad ones and probably still even fewer bad ones than you'll find already living here. Yeah, people would also argue <clears> about <throat> the economic strain it could put on society. <clears throat> uh, 
Hey. <clears throat> no. <laughs> Society, would you think that is the case? Uh, sorry, in what way do you mean the economic strain? So housing them, this thing is like, was it over 80 million a day or something is spent on asylum seekers to well, house them? I possibly question that statistic, but I would also say yeah. that as we saw during the cost of living crisis, there is enough money to yeah. go around for everyone. Exactly, yeah. But if anything, in fact, the refugee crisis was used as a way from the Tory government to scapegoat people, to say that these were, that was where all the money was going, where we know that's not where the money was going. The money was going into tax cuts and it was going into making sure that corporate banks and uh, billionaires managed to retain as much money as they could. Yeah, so taken together, as you can see, we're quite divided today. Isn't, shouldn't there be a protest just against the government itself to put the funds in the right places? Because I feel like you both share similar views in some senses in that in that respect. Oh no no no, we I don't think we share any. I know obviously obviously there's extremes on both sides, but some people would argue that funds should be uh, placed properly, whether it's for the Scottish homeless or asylum seekers coming into the country. I think the whole question of funds. I mean, what we've seen not just with the, the previous Tory government, but for a long time, you know, you've seen an economic crash where um, you know the rich essentially were bailed. You know, what's what's is kind of what's is smart. You can't just put no average thinker on out here and have him be thinking on his toes. Like you really got to be paying attention to what everybody's saying, and really got to be doing your own research on your old time. If you're not really, if you're not really, if you're not really doing that, you can't come out here and speak to people because they're gonna you're gonna run into people like this who are actually using their mind. <laughs> you know, you're gonna run into some idiots that are good for content but you also gonna run into these people who are also good to, for content and who are really have a clear and uh, decisive message and are not confused bailed out the bank and who are can articulate perfectly what they feel bankers were bailed out who caused the crisis ever since then right across europe and internationally we've seen austerity measures we've seen attacks on um, living standards, working working class people's rights at work, pay and so on. We're experiencing the longest um, freeze on pay um, since the 1870s or something like that, um, or it might be the 1850s, but yeah, this is, this is an extreme situation. What I think the people on the other side um, might want to present themselves, the organisers, as people who are, you know, representing the white working class. They don't. I mean, if you look at, for example, people like Tommy Robinson, this is not the class that they represent. They represent, you know, a discontented uh, middle class that's disorientated by what's happened in the crisis. Many people can be pulled in behind those narrow individualistic politics that are about um, playing the blame game. Or we can look to the collective solutions that the working class movement has always offered. That gave us the right to vote, that gave us, you know, the working day, the holidays and all these other things. So I think we need to say no, actually, you know, as somebody said on the stage earlier today, none of the people that are pushing the far right agenda or the racist division can be seen on any of the struggles about fighting for better housing, the NHS or any of these things. They're, they're never present in them. They're only present when it's about sowing the seeds of division. The people over there, I will never agree with their version of what is right. Never. All I want is I wish them no harm. I just want them to give them the facts and help to change their mind because too much of this is just propaganda by the far right and propaganda that's in the interests of the ruling classes across Britain and all other countries. So open your eyes, have a good look and actually see what's happening here because we're all being exploited by multinationals, by governments that seek their own ends. There's nobody in George Square just now to me that looks particularly affluent. There's nobody in George Square just now to me that's arrived in a limo. Facts. Facts. That's why I remember I said earlier, you got to be able to read between the lines. There's just ordinary people that want a fairer world. And that's all we're asking for. And you need to stand up and show your support for that. If you look at the signs around here, if you follow a couple of people, there's great resources on there, like petitions you can sign. Petitions are a great way. Emailing your MP is a great way to do it. It's really is, easy it, is, it all, is it all passive, though? Don't we really need to do something like maybe a messenger in Parliament or, you know? I am a messenger from the Lord and nobody wants to listen to me. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. Well, John the Baptist was crazy as well, yeah? He went to the, he went, he went to the wilderness and ate locusts and honey. 
I, I, feel, mean, like, I feel like the media will twist yeah. events like this. They'll say how many were arrested. They'll show someone getting arrested. Call, yeah, you know. absolutely, absolutely, there will be. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. there will be. There's, there's clear, sorry, there's clear bias in the media, 100%. And you know, a messenger in court would be ideal, brilliant. But you know, if we're talking in, in realistic terms, for what if you're asking what we can do right now, that's what we can do right now. What everyone can do right now is educate yourself. Um, sign petitions, show up to protest, show your face, like vote with your feet sort of thing. Yeah. And then hope that, you know, all of this sparks some change. Yeah. And that kind of goes back to racism as well. Like I've experienced racism myself back in the day. Yeah, hope is... But, yeah. you know, silence and racism doesn't change their, their point of view. Should we not be teaching people yeah. about, you know, different cultures? You no, know, faith without works is dead and they're putting in the work. So maybe, you know, keep the faith alive and keep doing this stuff. Eventually, they'll meet the hope slash faith and the, the groundwork being laid will eventually meet and something will change. Well, that's a one more longer term solution. Yeah, absolutely. Greater investment. Our education system has been gutted by austerity yeah. in our communities. So many of our youth um, centres and whatnot have been shut down, yeah. which means that you've got a lot of young people who, do, who have seen their communities being stripped away by austerity who are then being, that's a fertile breeding ground for the far right, so if you reverse austerity, bring back activities, bring back groups, bring back proper education and high paying jobs, the far right won't be able to reach as many people because it is mainly built out of that fear of losing your community, but it's not refugees that are destroying communities, it's the government and it's austerity. This rally usually gets tarnished as a far right rally. How have you found today? Uh, not bad, man. Just two tier Kia again with the police. Yeah. Um, that is usual. Strata de Mora, guys, the people are actually from this country. And but, but, but bringing people in for no reason, you know what I mean? And, and, and there's good homeless people that are sick, man. Lived here all our life. And, and there's good homeless people that are sick, man. And but, but bringing people in for no reason, you know what I mean? And, and, and there's good homeless people that are sick, man. Lived here all our life. Yeah. Well, to be it, honest with you, I've been homeless for three years right. and I can't get a house. Mm. Now, I'm in a hotel and the government can't house me. Right. You know what I mean? And I've lived in Scotland for 33 years. Yeah. Is it fair though to say like it's either the homeless people or the asylum seekers? Isn't there a way to help everyone? Well, no, that's not fair. But what I will say is, if you want to come into this country, come in the right way, not the wrong way. What would you like to see specifically? Is it mainly the homeless situation in, in Scotland and Britain? Uh, these MPs and government officials have to take a pay cut. Yeah. So they do. They have to because the cost of living is ridiculous. It's not gonna ever happen. Nobody can, uh, there's times I struggle to even eat and it's just getting beyond the joke now. Scotland has let the most people in out of any country, right? And now we're suffering for it. Our own people can't get a house. I can't get a house for three years. I, I have been homeless for three years and I was born in this country. I am not saying that doesn't give somebody else the right to come in and get a house. But do it the right way. Give the people that need the homes first. You know what I mean? We provided uh, our, we provided our structure. We provided work, everything. I don't mind somebody coming in from another country and building up their shop, building up their life, their virtue, and having a business and having a life in this country. But you come over here and you abide by our laws, our rules, and our. Well, it not not the legend, but our rules and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? You've got to abide by it. Because yeah. if you don't, then no. Yeah, integrate them into society. But is there a way to do that though? They're undocumented. Like, there's a huge backlog of asylum seekers at the minute. Is there a way to actually, you know, involve them in our society and culture? There is, but in a way where we've got to do it in a safer way. If you know what I mean, because these hostels and these places are putting posters and pictures up saying, do not touch kids, do not touch another person's kid without the parents' consent. Why should we be saying? Yeah, don't, yeah. like if I, if, I had my, if I had to walk around and somebody got to doing that, like I literally, somebody would be hurt. Like, that to them, if they should already know 
what they what our laws are. So no, we shouldn't have to put posters up saying do not touch kids. And these are in every single hotel you go into, and I live in one of those hotels, and I can say that for a fact that that's there. As you can see, most of the dog did not like the police, but he cars have dispersed and there was a big turnout today. You saw the amount of police presence and I think it was needed after the recent protests. We heard from both sides and let Glasgow have its say. But yeah, I guess if you decide what side you stand on or what message should be sent, I think a lot of people were talking about the government and I think it is up to them to kind of do something about the issues that were spoken about. But this was Glasgow. I'll see you for the next one. I see a lot of points being made by both sides that are valid. And, and once again, let me know what you think in the comments. I came all the way home to do this reaction. I was an hour away and now I'm going back. <laughs> see ya.